This meeting is being recorded. Okay, so hello and welcome. Hi, Dimitris. Uh, this is our now uh, basically weekly standard Coffee for Future. And yeah, uh, yeah. Th this episode today is something we've been working on for like a month or yeah, maybe something a little bit over the month. Um, yeah. It's about an art colony and air pollution, how we want to bring the attention of, of yeah everyone on the Balkans uh, that about the air pollution that is really overwhelming here, but nobody's talking about it except some uh, random um, eco groups of people and just people that are uh, aware of the situation, but not everyone. And this is a big issue. And we always saw artists as uh, the ones that are very good in transferring the message, right? Yeah, it's, it's basically, um, it, it also paves the way for um, art colonies or through, or, or basically communicating um, other climate change issues, uh, related issues or issues relevant to pollution um, to the general public. So it, it can be a great stepping stone towards that and to show how effective this can be because it can really be effective. Yeah, and this first one we are going to do in collaboration with the uh, apartment here in the mountain in Serbia, in central Serbia, Kopaonik, which is a ski resort. And um, Ski Sun and Fun, they're on Instagram. Uh, ski Sun and Fun will donate their apartments, but we're also looking for sponsors in all different um, areas, whatever is needed for, for the art colony. And we're also looking for artists because we want to have like a variety of artists from all different um, spectrums, not just solely painters, let's say, but also digital art and uh, like um, multimedia art. And we want to try to bring um, also uh, people that are like surrounding this, um, this spectrums, right, to say so. Um, with, with bringing conservationists into the, the picture and educators and just like universities and uh, kind of bringing this to another level of, of, um, of just discussion, of talking about the thing, right? Yes, yes, definitely we need to, I mean, the art colonies are not restrained to a specific kind of art. Um, any any artist is, is 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 more than welcome if they're um, willing to unleash their creativity in order to promote and to raise awareness and to um, show the effects that uh, air pollution can have on um, on people, which um, they are immense, and uh, the Balkans are among the champions um, that, uh, that 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 view this. Uh, uh, these catastrophic consequences so they really need to communicate this and disseminate this as much as possible yeah i mean it's also like balkans are champions in in many things and uh, drinking and and eating and all that but also like i think balkans is one of the the last parts of europe where you can actually smoke still inside and have kids in the same area where you're smoking and uh, so like there is a big I think there is a big knowledge gap here because uh, it's yes, it's common knowledge, but nobody really knows what it is. And and when you say that there is 15,000 people that die on average in Serbia just due to the air pollution, that is quite a lot, yeah. But people don't, people are not aware of that, and um, and they're also not like. They're not aware. They're not ready to accept that this is their reality, and and then and then do something about it. Because if you're not aware of your reality and about the situation you are in, you cannot take any actions to change. So it's more easier to say, oh, but it was like they like this always. Or of course, when it's winter, you have to burn wood. You have to heat. You know, it's like, but it is not. And and the, the reality is. There are so many other factors in play as well as like the thermal power plants because I think um, Bosnia and Serbia are one of the the biggest uh, uh, coal burners for to, to produce electricity in in Europe and 
in adjacent countries and uh, that, that's quite an issue as well like this is also like a part is like uh, regulatory uh, but part is also on the government themselves that they're not taking action yeah yeah certainly and um, it's as you mentioned there are many sources of um, air pollution it can be thermal power plants it can be households for cooking for um, for heating and for other for other ways and of course, you're going to like the first um, thing that comes to my mind is that, uh, you know, like the first um, discussion that we, 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 you might have with um, the people from the local communities is that, uh, OK, the state should pay for us to to to, you know, like upgrade our buildings. But that's that by itself. It's not uh, it's not enough. Um, like people should know exactly what the consequences, what the consequences of air pollution are. And secondly, they should know how to um, start um, the dialogue with the, the policymakers so that they can create a framework together to um, to promote and to support a new kind of economy that is um, less um, emittive. And yes, it is huge issue because also it's uh, it's like silent death because you say it's nothing. I'm just gonna go outside. I'm just gonna or I'm just gonna burn uh, good in my, in my place. But it's um, it's it's like the death. It's like death from carbon monoxide when you don't feel like nothing. But you feel like nothing is happening because you cannot smell it, and then you suddenly can uh, find yourself in uh, you know like as a victim. So it it really needs to be addressed. Yeah, and it's not just like. Uh, um us i mean the kids the kids are the ones that are the the most harmed by this air pollution because this pm2 uh, particles they don't um, you're not able to get to get them out of your body so as much as your body absorbs through lifetime this stays with you so if you're born like if you're uh, let's say in your mid 30s and you just now are being exposed to pm particles it's much less harmful than if you're two years old and you're being exposed to these pm2 particles and it accumulates over the lifetime until you're 30 then until you're 30 your lungs will be the lungs of a you know cancer survivor god forbid or like you know big big smoker because this we know now this for a fact like we have for the past 10 years uh, because india and china have had this air pollution and pakistan like it's super high levels and we have uh, like um what is it like this is the science i've been reading we have like um child pulmonologist but like a surgeon surgeon pulmonologist for for kids that has that he has uh, operated on children that are like 13 and 14 and have lungs like as if they would be smoking for 40 years because they were growing up in such a, in such an environment and this is what is happening now across the balkans and people are just they're just being so uh, reluctant about this and they're like yeah of course it's normal that your nose is runny the whole winter it's normal that you get tired after two two flights of stairs it's normal that you cannot run uh, because you sit at the computer the whole day but this is not true like yes of course that's partially normal but also even if you want to go out, you cannot go out because the air, basically your lungs is filled with smoke. And you're, for me, the moment when I'm like, when it's winter and I'm anywhere in a city in, in Balkans or anywhere near such high rates of pollution, my eyes itch, my nose hurts, my lungs hurt. Like really, I, I get like, I think I get like a skin rash immediately. And, and my son, who is like three year old, he was like really had a severe allergic reaction to the air. It was really bad. Yeah, and it's um, <clears throat> it, it indeed is a huge problem also for uh, young people, especially for the young people. But uh, it's yeah, as you mentioned, it, it's crazy to consider that, for example, we are trying to um, to to live a healthy lifestyle, to um, you know, our to, to try to sustain ourselves in um, in good shape and uh, and also our health. And then seeing that you know um, this is all for nothing because of, of the whole pollution, and we're still gonna uh, have uh, you know a low um, life expectancy because there is um, the issue of air pollution. So it it really like people really need to know exactly how this, this is 
this becomes an issue for them and then exactly how they are going to uh, they can actually um, you know uh, uh, tackle this issue for example you mentioned India like the, the, the thing is that there they thought that uh, you know um, they, just, just by having the coal power plants they they would have this pollution but this is not completely true even in even in the situation that they are if they um, if they advocate for a refurbishment of their, uh, let's say, power plants, even this, which is like a very small step, this can contribute. But they, so they should think like, which are the steps to start going from this disaster situation towards somewhere where the air is fully clean and to understand all of the steps that they can do with uh, different financing um, means um, with the ultimate goal of course being um, having like fully clean air without any any um, emissions either from coal uh, power plants either from uh, uh, smoking either from cooking and clean and uh, heating um, so that's that's a, that's a very big issue I, I of course and, and I think like now if we like I'm, I'm trying to monitor the regulative steps across Europe uh, on the subject and I think UK and France are putting up forward that clean air is a human right so like if it's a human right you have to provide like this is your like state mandate to provide clean air and when you look at like European map there is this application um, like I will say now what's the name of the app for for smartphone because air, air visual but i think it's the same for for google play air visual like tells you across everywhere where we walk globally uh the air pollution yeah and when you look at the european map you always see that this like uh, central european and, and northern european map like let's say austria switzerland and germany is uh, super green like usually and okay so it might be also due to the mountains, like some of these regions are mountains, but nor northern Germany is not. Um, but uh, it's also because of the regulation. And I know for a fact that like in Austria, you cannot burn coal that creates smoke even for barbecue. So if you're making barbecue, you have to buy special coal within the cities so that you can make barbecue or you, or you can do electric barbecue. So like there are all these steps that, that can be taken. Of course, this is like the last step. First, of course, the state of Austria paid for each household to have the filters on their chimneys. And um, the, the thermal power plant is like super, super good. And then you had all this, um, uh, I don't know, like um, 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 you, you had all these issues with the, um, uh burning the rubbish like in the center of vienna there is a big power plant that burns uh waste communal waste but the filters are impeccable so this is just you know. yeah exactly and i would like to add i mean um of course we say that um in northern europe uh, let's say the, the there is it's a much better air quality but still according to the un uh, like there's around 99 percent of um, of the population which um, uh, breathes air that is not um, you know like is not of, of the adequate quality so maybe also if we start from the balkans we can try to disseminate this in the in the best way so that everyone understands um what the implications are uh yeah like for example the uk i mean this move from the labor party is is, is good for the like um uh, you know to support the to support uh, uh, the human quality as a human right uh, but in in general uh, what is needed is uh, is awareness um, it, it's the same as with um uh, with the, the, the cop on, on biodiversity like no, nobody really pays attention because it's like a side uh, event like an event after the, the after cop 27 for example but we really need to comprehend that um you know with with air quality for, for example with air quality we um without air quality i mean we can uh, like lower substantially our life expectancy with Without biodiversity, we cannot exist on this planet. Uh, this, these things, they have to be felt by people. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, I think since like no regular brochures or regular workshops cannot function so far as, as, as well as they could, 
I think art is a way to like it's let's say a weapon that we can definitely use and I think it can be very very efficient yeah and I agree 100% I think that basically this is our or at least this is in, in my head this is our like last resort we have to make masses like really masses masses of people need to be awakened from this let's say um just uh, growth syndrome or, or disease i don't know this is internal growth disease and they have to be awakened to the fact to realize that we cannot exist on this planet uh, if we don't address climate change if we don't address biodiversity loss if we don't address their pollution like this is all like we are all interconnected it doesn't matter yes of course for the air you you know you can live in certain countries but on the other hand if we lose biodiversity we are just lost like it's not we lose one ecosystem the, all ecosystems are interconnected and and we know that for a fact that for example the sand from sahara is fertilizing the amazon rainforest so we know how how like even those like geometric geographically so uh, far out places are interconnected and because this is one little planet one little blue dot <laughs> that needs to be basically saved and yeah yes exactly and uh, um, and uh, this is something that uh, then can be replicated um, I'm, I'm seeing for yeah. example um in in central asia that we're we're talking a lot about they're having the exact same problem as uh, we have in the Balkans. Um, in, in Mongolia, it's the same situation. They, like, uh, we really need to understand. And we, these are all, all countries and all regions that can really be sustained with um, means that do not emit as much. So we really need to um, work together to co-create so that... Uh, the future generations do not have to face uh, such um, terrible consequences because i mean mortality is one thing but the other thing is also respiratory diseases um, cancer which which is even even worse because i mean there is one thing that is worse than let's say uh, dying is like suffering um, until that point so like people yeah. facing all of this is um, is even worse and um, it really needs to stop. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think that we we kind of chosen a very good path and like in, in sense good, but also like very interesting and inspiring. And that is like bringing artists basically up to this mountain, which is like um, the lungs of Serbia it is the, the, the only place that is green on the map. It's basically um, like a like a spa for your lungs and and just like bringing bringing artists here to like also to to enjoy fresh air but also to create uh, and to to try to bring the message across but what we want to do also like uh, just just mention a little bit about the conservation sites and and all that because here um locally is one monument from the second world war which has been degrading due to air pollution and climate change like quite fast and quite rapidly and it's not the, like it's not an isolated uh, monument it's happening across all the monuments across the world because of the acidity of, of the rain and because of like different various factors that are now uh, accumulating on the monuments and especially like in where, where air pollution is high like in Serbia um, buildings both big buildings and monuments become gray very fast and you have to do this uh, refurbishment and restoration um, much more often than you would have to do in let's say northern Germany but it's not just that after a certain point this um, starts to uh, like go into the structure and then you're losing the monument so so our idea was to bring artists but also to bring the the this conservationist into the talk together with us like the environmental people the people from from the branch of of uh, climate change and and uh, sustainability and just like uh, make this cross pollination somehow happen yeah, exactly. And there is no better place to show how uh, what the, the value of cultural heritage is than uh, yeah, Southeast Europe, the Middle East, like um, 
There is yeah. so much, um, so many historic monuments. There is so much history that we are uh, striving to preserve. So it's it's very there. There is no better way, I think, to show um, yeah. how important this is than to to engage also with uh, conservationists. And I think this um, uh, cross pollination between um, all of these groups, it can generate something um, groundbreaking in terms of um, education on climate change, something that um, it has not, not just climate change, but also the uh, adverse effects of um, uh, of environmental pollution. Um, and this is, and I think this is a, a revolutionary, let's say, way to show, um, to show people uh, what is really happening. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think it's also um, very important that we, like what you said, this is just the first event. This is just the beginning. And the same thing is being experienced throughout the Middle East and uh, Central Asia. And there's so many other, like, of course, Asia in general is, is suffering from air pollution. And this can be just uh, like one of the first colonies to start and uh, to go like basically to follow the Silk Road, it would still, it would be the exact path to follow of the air pollution. And um, and yeah, it, it can tie out nicely together. And um, I think there is no better way uh, to, to just bring people's attention uh, than art and especially in our cultures because um, Balkan is very, for me, the in general, the culture of Balkan is very, closely connected to Middle East and uh, to Turkey and Central Asia. And I don't know, it, it, maybe it's because we were like going back and forth between Ottoman and Byzantine for, for so long through centuries. But uh, there is definitely something of, of Oriental uh, still there and people are much more susceptible through songs and, and other types of art and uh, than they are through politics and, and policy. And and this is something that we should also have in mind when, when like uh, mapping our stakeholder maps. Right. Yeah, people are much more um, emotional against um, uh, towards, for example, a song like a poem or um, Mm -hmm. <clears throat> or like even a painting if it's described in the adequate manner and i think it's it's a great uh, it's a great way to um to, to bring this to the, to their attention because and it's i don't maybe it's not just um, people in southeast europe but it's it's in general i think it's a more general thing but uh, yeah like we share some uh, cultural values that we we can use to actually uh, turn into art and to mobilize people uh, through this hopefully yeah yeah so uh, let's see how this um, first art colony uh, goes and um, this is like an we wanted to do this podcast as an open invitation for all artists and other people like who might get interested to support us in any way or to have this event in their region in their country like that's here perhaps yeah yeah that is for sure and it's it's first of all an open call to to anyone that is interested within the balkans and secondly anyone that wants to that is yeah that is looking to replicate this or to start a new movement within the region and think they they can do this um, we are open to to supporting any initiatives and to working together so yeah like uh, do not hesitate to to reach out to us yeah, so we, we are usually posting this uh, podcast on YouTube and LinkedIn. So these are the right places to contact us. Um, and um, yeah, this one uh, will definitely be somewhere beginning of June, I believe, this year, this first art colony. And then we see uh, how things develop. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, so thank you, Dimitris, and um, we talk soon. <laughs> yes, see you next week with the, the next podcast. <laughs> see you next week for next Coffee for Future. Bye. Yeah. Okay.